Hello everyone. Today I have selected one topic from biopsychology and that topic will be important for all psychology entrance examinations. Do you know one thing? Our nervous system has ability to change their activity according to internal as well as external stimulus. If you are trying to learn new things, new skills, then brain changes themselves. If you are guessing the topic, you are right. Today we are going to talk about neuroplasticity. So let's begin. During the first several years of life, the brain develops very quickly, and you will be amazed by one interesting fact. At the time of birth, each cerebral cortex cell has an estimated 2,500 small gaps between neurons. and by the age of 3 each neuron has 15000 small gaps these small gaps are called synapses and at synapse neurotransmitters functions so tiny gap right that you can find between two neurons will be synapse and all neurotransmitters right functioning here at synapses but the number of synapses in the average adult is just half of higher limits and there is a specific reason it happening because some connections get stronger and others weaker as we acquire new experiences when we learn new things so few a specific neural connection will be stronger and few neural connections will be weaker so neural connections get stronger with continuous usage if we use them regularly and those we are not using will die gradually so if we are using a certain neural connection they will be stronger right they will be more stronger if we are using them regularly rather than they will die gradually so by creating new connections and breaking existing one the brain may change how it interact with the environment and there are many benefits of it right this is neuroplasticity so there are many benefits of neuroplasticity it increases cognitive capabilities they help us to learn new skills and they are also helpful in the recovery after brain injuries and there are right when we talk about the types there are two types of neuroplasticity first we can say a structural neuroplasticity and second is functional neuroplasticity so a structural plasticity sometimes we call them neuroplasticity right is diverse anatomical modification of neural tissues like changes in the number location and size of neural tissues so whenever we are talking about a structural neuroplasticity we are talking about changes in number location and size of neural tissues we can say a structural plasticity is the mechanism for the brain to repair itself and ability to change their physical structure on the basis of learning so whenever we are learning any things whenever we are acquiring any right skills so there will be changes in their physical structure so this will be a structural plasticity sometimes we call them a structural neuroplasticity so when we get any experience or we learn something there will be anatomical modification that is because of a structural plasticity so whenever there will be changes in a structure so that will be a structural plasticity and now second type is functional plasticity right it is our brain's capacity to shift functions from a injured part of the brain to other healthy area we can take one example for example if anyone met with accident and in those accident there is a specific reason in the brain let's take an example if that reason is responsible for language is injured so at that time functional plasticity can work and now functions related to language will be shifted to other area of the brain that are not injured so person will be able to use language despite their language related area is injured so if you want to know 
about which area of the brain controlling language and how they are function you can watch one of our previous video i will add that particular link in description right so in past scientists used to believe that the brain is fixed no changes occur after childhood but there are too many researches around the neuroplasticity specifically two names or theories i want to mention here that can be important for psychology inferences first william james yes r william james he suggested uh, in his book the name of that particular book is the principles of psychology and he wrote in 1890 he added that organic matter specifically nervous tissues seems endowed with a very extraordinary degree of plasticity means in simplified manner we can say according to william james they told us that our nervous tissues have significant capabilities or capacity to adapt modify and regenerate themselves right and second name is carl lasley they discovered evidence of alteration in the monkey's brain circuit in 1920s and he added that the brain can heal itself after being hurt so when there will be injury in any area of the brain brain is capable to heal themselves so today we believe that brain constantly creates new neural pathways and modifies old ones to adapt new experiences learn new information and create new memories so whenever we are creating new memories whenever we are learning any skills whenever right we are uh, you know accumulating something from environment right there will be changes in neural pathways and there will be modification in neural pathway so this was the basic explanation of neuroplasticity and if you are still watching this video you have potential to be a good psychologist in your domain and believe me you will get what you want from this subject just maintain this curiosity that you have now keep learning keep moving and enjoy psychology all the best bye